So what up YouTube? I'm so glad that you guys have connected and that you come here on Sunday, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? To hear a word from the Lord. This message, <laughs> expect the word to work. Man, I hope it really blesses you. It blessed me. It blessed us while we were studying it. If this bless you, I need you to share. Make sure that you subscribe. So anytime I push up something, you know it first. Thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel. We about to go to this word. Let's get this word, because the word, it works. Let's go. Lord, today's message is entitled, uh, An Expectation of the Word. Expect the word to work. Have I got anybody that expects the word to work? I need you to tell everybody around you, I expect the word to work. Come on. Now, if you believe that, put your hands on it and put a praise right there. I expect the word to work. I don't expect nothing less, nothing less. This is the year of expectation. 2024 has been noted to be the year of expectation. This is the year where you shift your posture in anticipation of God's promises manifesting in your life. When I say it, when I say it and you agree with it, say amen. Huh? This is the year where you take your seat of authority uh, where God has called you and do what he wants you to do. And no matter what happens, the discipline is this. No matter what happens this year, that you sit in a seat of expectation for God's word to manifest in your life. Huh? In other words, whenever you have a problem or a circumstance or a situation that occurs, you look for the promise of God to manifest in your life. For every problem, there is a promise and we have to pull on the promises of God. This year, as we talk about the year of expectation, expectation is a law. Expectation is a law that functions and operates in the earth. The law of expectation states this, that you don't always get what you want, but you get what you expect. Huh? You don't always get Get what you want, but you get what you expect. There are circumstances in life that you cannot control. However, your expectation being set can shift the dimensions in your favor. Huh? The law of expectation basically says that you're never going to get more than what you expect. So you have to lift your expectations uh, unto the hills that which come with your help. Sometimes we are afraid because of life disappointments. We are afraid to set an expectation because we want to protect our hearts from being disappointed. And because the enemy knows how the law works, he tries to plant the seed of negativity and disappointment in your head to keep you having low expectations. You figure if I have low expectations, I can manage what happens because then I won't have to worry about being disappointed. But who wants to live life with low expectations when God said that I made you the head and not the tail when God says that I want to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or think you have to learn how to live your life in great expectation this principle basically states that we can achieve anything in God as long as we believe and put our faith into it you see so ultimately expect expectations allow me to set the path expectations are a belief system expectations are basically a foundation for what and how we believe uh, uh, basically expectations are faith by spirit right because faith teaches us how and what to expect in Psalm 62 and 5 uh, the Bible says David set his expectations on God he said my soul waits thou only upon God for my expectation is from him. My expectation is from God. Anybody ever expected God to do something in and through your life and he showed up 
and manifest it. Sometimes we put our expectations in people and people are disappointing us. We shift that disappointment that we experience in our human experience and we put that on God. God said, don't put that on me because I am not the one that lets you down. Even if I don't answer your prayers, it's because I had something bigger in mind. Even if I don't do it the way you thought I was going to do it, I still do something because I know what's best. Can you lift your hands if you trust in the Lord and say, I trust you, God, I trust you. And so when we, when, we, when we set our hope or our expectation on God, we, we start to align and adjust our participation or our preparation into agreement with what it is that he says or is doing. I can see your expectation by your preparation. I can see what you're anticipating by how your posture is. And so today we're going to look in scripture this story of a man who had great expectations expectations of Jesus. This man had tremendous expectations, faith, and hope on God. He had a problem that hit his life that he didn't anticipate, but he knew who to run to. He knew where the answer was, and he did not hold up on putting his expectation on God. There is so much that can be uh, uh, extracted from this story in the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter, verse five through 13. Matthew 8, verse 5 through 13, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home and is paralyzed, unmovable, cannot move, and is suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? Shall I come and heal him? Uh, he replied, Lord, I do not deserve for you to have you come up under my roof but just say the word and my servant will be healed my god that's a place to shout right there he said i don't need you to come i just need you to sin god help me up in here he says for i myself i myself and am a man under authority with soldiers under me i tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes and i say to my servant do this and he does it when Jesus heard his understanding his revelation of how authority work he was amazed and said to those following him he said truly I tell you I have not found anyone is Israel with this type of expectation or this type of faith verse 13 he says then Jesus said to him go and let it be done just as you believe it would and his servant was healed that very moment. I got a church up in here. I need you to prophesy to somebody and say it will be what you expect. Come on. Tell them it will be what you expect and before you get home, by the time you get home, his word is going to be working in your life. I need you to decree and declare that God's word will and is working in my life. He said I have to note that I have not seen this type of of faith. This man was noted for his law, his type of faith. He said, I haven't seen anyone get it like this. Every time somebody comes looking for a miracle, they want me to touch it. They want me to, to do it their way. They want me to come with them. They want me to follow them. But you mean to tell me you don't want me or need me to lay my hands on it? You mean to tell me that you believe enough in the power of what I say that when I say it, you start acting like it's already what I said I need somebody in 2024 that's not gonna wait to June to act like it already is working on your behalf I need you to I need you to declare that God when I hear a word in church I start shouting even in my circumstances haven't changed yet I need you to look around you and tell somebody yet 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 he said, he, said, he said, I haven't seen, I haven't seen this level of faith in operation. Allow me to teach a little bit, 730. I haven't, I haven't seen this level of faith, this level of understanding in operation like this. I haven't seen someone that understand the power of language and life and death being in their mouth. He says, he says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, in the Amplified Version, as it speaks about 
faith. It said, now faith is the assurance <laughs> or the title deed confirmation. Come on here. Of things hoped for or divinely guaranteed and the evidence of things not seen and the conviction of their reality because faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Now that's a definition right there of faith that says that I have the title deed of what God promised even if I don't have the manifestation. How many of you know if you got the paperwork it's already yours? How many of you know that if it's, if it's real it's in writing and if it's in writing you can guarantee that it's going to manifest. In 2024 I need you to take God at his word like never before. In 2024 I need you to push past your disappointments. Push past the times when God didn't do it the way you thought he was going to do it when you thought he was going to do it and find enough faith to say even in my disappointment I still trust that your plan is better than my plan can I get somebody to give God a praise like you believe that his word is working in your life I love it I love it I love it because when God gives us faith faith can I lay the foundation when God gives us faith faith becomes the currency in the kingdom of God when God gives us faith he gives us faith for things that he wants to manifest in the earth he might not give you the manifestation but he'll give you faith for it and faith then is the currency that gives you what God has for your life faith is the language of God because by faith we call those things that be not as though they were that's why you gotta stop talking to some people who don't understand your language you talking to them like it's already done and they trying to tell you what's going on I didn't tell I don't need to talk about what already is I'm talking about my shall be oh my god faith brings your future into your now did you hear what I said I said faith brings your future into your now it manifests itself into your life so when the Jesus says to this man I have not seen this level of faith this level of understanding this level of expectancy I have not seen someone operate with this type of clarity I got to do a miracle for you oh my god but it's without faith it's impossible to please God but with and by faith it's the only way you please God four things you can expect in 2024 when you use your faith can you look down your row and say use your faith this year huh can you look around you and say use your faith this year come on challenge them say I put a demand on you to use your faith if you got a situation find the word of God and use your faith for it four things you can expect number one we learn from this man that you can expect to get in God's presence you can expect to get in God's presence this man did not wait for Jesus to come to him he went to Jesus he saw he knew he was coming in his vicinity in his area and he says listen I got to get in his presence he's a miracle worker I got to get in his presence he's a way maker I got to get in his presence he knows exactly what I have need of before I ask I'm not gonna sit around talking to y'all y'all can't do nothing I'm going to the one that can do exceedingly and abundantly I need to get anybody excited about getting in God's presence have I got any God seekers that say if I just make it to the house of God I know what to do have I got anybody that say if I can't make it to the house of God I know how to praise him in the shower I can praise him in my car I can praise him in my I can praise him anywhere I can get his attention because if I get his attention something's about to break out in my life can you take a moment and lift up your hands and provoke the presence of God because pulling the presence of God in your life pulls him in your direction how do I get in his presence? I speak well of him. Come on, prayer church. What do we do in prayer? We say adoration. You're wonderful, magnificent. You're holy. That you're great. There's nobody like you. You're a wheel in the middle of the wheel. You're a way maker. You're the word, the rhema word, the living life, the king of kings. 
kings, the Lord of lords. God said, who me? You talking about me? I got to get close to you. You know who I am. You talking about who me? You must be talking. And then when you start saying words like holy, he said, you ain't talking about nobody else but me. When you start saying words like hallelujah, he said, well, that praise don't belong to nobody but me. They must be talking about me. And the fact that they talking about me, I got to come see what they need. Can I get you to open up your mouth and get God's attention? Anybody ever had to walk the floor in your living room and say, God, I got to get your attention? Have anybody ever been on their way to the hospital room and say, God, I got to get your attention? Have you ever walked in your child's bedroom and say, God, I need your Look at somebody around you, tell them we got to get in his presence this year. We got to get in his presence. We got to get in his presence. We got to get in his presence. His presence becomes the atmosphere of miracles, signs, and wonders. His presence becomes the atmosphere of miracles, signs, and wonders. He came to him. He came to him asking for help, asking for help. I love it because when you get in God's presence, it will push past every excuse that the enemy try to tell you. Have you ever noticed how the enemy he fights you from getting in God's presence. He knows the power of God's presence. He's trying to condemn you. Why your hands up? You know you sinned this week. I do know I sinned this week, but thank God for the blood. God Almighty. Uh, the more I think about my shortcomings, the more I'm going to give him praise because he still lets me in. Have you ever thought about how the enemy try to condemn you to get you to not feel like you should be in the presence of God? Try to bring up your faults, try to bring up your failures, try to make you feel a pity party, try to bring up your disappointments, try to bring, shut up devil, <laughs> I ain't got time for you. I cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When you try to tell me I'm not worthy and you remind me of my past, I'm going to remind you of your future. Good God Almighty, I need somebody that know you're in the presence of God to lift up your hands and worship right there. Hey, shout out. Worship. 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 Come on, worship. You can worship by yourself. But when you get with somebody else that's saying the same stuff, you can get your row hot. I need you to get your row hot. You can get your section hot. I need you to get your set. You can turn up the temperature. You can say, I didn't come to check the temperature. I came to create the temperature. And I didn't come to play church this morning. I got to get in here. This man, this man, this man. This man had to fight the enemy in his head to go to Jesus. Let me lay it. He had to fight the enemy in his head to go to Jesus. He was a centurion. He was a Roman soldier. He was a Roman soldier. Jesus is a Jewish man. Romans and Jewish people don't come to In fact, uh, he is an oppressor of the Jewish people. He is an oppressor. So he doesn't by right or understanding think that he has access but yet he was able to push past his history, push past the fact that he was a Gentile, push past the fact that he was an oppressor, push past his ethnicity, push past his occupation, push past his history, and everything that told him that he doesn't qualify for a miracle and say, there's no way in the world I'm going to be this close to a miracle worker and not ask for a miracle. I don't care what I've done. I don't care what I've been. I'd rather for God to tell me no than for me not to ask. I need somebody that's about to put it all out there in 2024 and say, I'm going to ask whether he give it to me or not. You have not because you ask not. I need an honest person to look around you and say, I got so much. I got so much that could have kept me from Jesus. Come on, tell him I got so many reasons he could have said no. I got so many reasons he could have kept me out. I know I look good today, but trust me, there's a story behind here. I know my hair did, and I know I look nice. I know I look saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But that ain't always been my story. I got so many reasons he could have told me no. But yet, he gave me access to the Father. And I'm going to sit in my seat. A 
of expectation. I'm too close. I'm too, and he should have killed me when they had a chance. I'm too close. <laughs> he should have told me no a long time. The fact that I'm still alive means he still got plans for me. I need somebody to adjust your position and sit in his presence. Aren't you glad you can get in God's presence? Aren't you glad that the veil has been ripped? Aren't you glad that you can come boldly, Hebrews 4 and 16, boldly let us approach God's throne, boldly with grace and confidence that we might receive mercy, grace, and help in a time of need in 2024. I don't need you tiptoeing in. I don't need you being shy. I need you to enter his gates with thanksgiving. I need you to come before his presence with a praise. I need you to declare this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I'm not worthy, but I'll give you praise because you made me worthy. Can I get you to lift up your hands and open up your mouth and release your praise? Pull them, pull them in your direction, pull them in your direction. I'm gonna expect, I'm gonna expect to get in this presence. I'm gonna sit in the seat of expectation. I'm sitting in the seat of expectation. Write this down. The presence of God is the place where promise and prophecy comes together. Write this down. The presence of God is the place where promise and prophecy come together. It's the place where what he promised you, what your expectation is, and the prophetic word of the future comes together in one space. And so when you get in his presence, things start to shift and things start to happen. The thing about getting in his presence is they start shifting before you can see it. <laughs> but when you get in his presence, things start changing. Have I got anybody that ever been worshiping crying with tears in your eyes because you thought it was one way and before you got back to your situation that thing had flipped over in another way say how did that happen honey I got off the phone and I got on my knees <laughs> listen I stopped gossiping about it and I start getting in the presence of God and it changes my situation number two number two number two not only can you expect to, to get in God's presence regardless of your history or regardless of how the enemy tries to keep you out you can expect to make your request known. You can expect to make your request known. Quit being shy about it. Quit being passive about it. Know what the word of the Lord says and give his word back to him. You ain't got to put your word on. Say, God, you said. <laughs> God, your word said. God, I read, I read in your word that you said. And because you're not a man that you should lie, I'm going to bring your word back to you. God say, just put me in remembrance of my word and I'll take care of the rest. Expect to make your request known. Verse 6, expect to make your request known. Verse 6, he said, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed terribly. He's at home. He cannot move. His posture is stuck. And I know I'm probably the last person that has the right to ask you for something. But I saw why they told me to watch you. <laughs> I saw how you work. I saw how you move and make miracles. And so I figure that I'll make my request known. He says, listen, I'm a person of a, under authority. I get it. I get it. I tell people what to do. They move. They do it. I tell them how to move it. They move and do it. So therefore, because I respect authority, because real recognize real and game recognize game, because I understand what it's like to be under authority, then I say, you ain't got to come to my house. Just speak a word and my servant will be healed. Do you see that? scripture next verse do you see that he didn't say if you say the word he didn't say no 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 verse 8 he didn't say if you say the word my servant might be healed he said if you if you say the word my servant will be healed he said if you verse 8 verse 8 he said if you say the word my servant will be healed he makes a declaration a defense 
definitive statement. He says, if you just say the right thing, my servant will be healed and my house will be made whole. He said, this request is not for me. This request is for my house. Have I got anybody in the room that can take 20 seconds because you got something you need God to do at your house? Can you open up your mouth and send a word to your house? Can you turn the television up and speak a word in your house? Can you release a sound in your house for your family, for your children? <laughs> he said, he said, uh, he said, just say, just say the word. I, I expect for my request to be made known. I'm in the seat of expectation for you to understand my request and it to be made known. This request is not for me. This request is for my home. It's for my home. I don't need you to travel there. I need you to send your word there. I need you to send your word. I read, I know Psalms 107 says that, that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all of their destruction and because I'm a man under authority then I know how authority works I know how your word works I know that the word works that when you speak it it manifests I know that the word works because before I ask you already have you know what I have need of I know that before the word works that you've already answered even before I ask I know that the way your word works that your word cannot return void but it shall accomplish the thing that you send it so if you say it it got to manifest if you speak a word God until that word goes to work and manifest in the life of what you promise it can't come back to you until it do what you told it to do in 2024 when I see a problem I'm just gonna speak a word in 2024 I'm gonna find the word of the Lord activated alive in my life until it manifests in every area the word is powerful if you make your request known the word is powerful if you make your request known the word is powerful when you make your request known and the word will work if you work it huh the word will work if you work it the word will work if you work it it'll work if you work it the word will work if you work it and when God works he works with his words when God works have you ever noticed when God works he doesn't work with his hands when God works he works with his words when he wanted to create creation he didn't touch anything he spoke everything <laughs> when God wants to see something manifest he doesn't put his hands on nothing he puts his mouth on something when God wants to change anything he speaks and when he speaks he sees what he says uh, and so the way God works is with his word he was like I don't need you to physically come and put your hands on it I need you to send a word to it because if you send a word to it the word will get to working I need a reinstatement of faith in God's word it's beautiful for me to preach the word of God but you need to live the love, word of God you need to love the word of God the only time you hear God's word can't be when we preach it you gotta have a word that you hid in your heart that goes to work on your behalf you gotta grab a hold of a God said and say I'm standing on this word until it manifests in my life I need you to tap three people around you. Tell them the word will work if you work it. Come on. Tell them the word will work if you work it. I got my reasons for this. I got my reasons for asking you to touch and speak. Uh, come on. Tell somebody the word will work if you work it. It'll work if you work it. It'll work if you work it. Matter of fact, it's working right now. Matter of fact, it's working right. Can you get a praise partner that you can praise God with over the working of his word that's working in your life? The word is working right now. It's working. 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 Just say it. It'll work. Just speak it. It'll work. It's working. I can't see it, but it's working. <laughs> I may not see it, but it's working. <laughs> He's a miracle worker and it's working. I know it's working. I may not feel it, but it's working. <laughs> I may not understand it, but it's working. Uh, I might not be in it yet, but it's working. God works, and I believe that it's work. And the thing you got to understand about the word is the word starts working when it's written. But it works in you when it's spoken. <laughs> the words start working when it's written, but in you it works when it's spoken. It starts working when it's written, but in you it works when you believe it. When you believe it, he said, man, 
don't just say a word and my servant will be here. Woo! What kind? I ain't even there yet. Just say a word and my phone gonna ring. Just speak a word and it's gonna shift. I'm not even going to run to see because I already know it's working. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to praise you right now like it's already working. That's why the enemy can't stand when you give God praise and it ain't changed yet. He said, this praise ain't because it already happened. This praise because I believe it's, already, it's about to happen. This praise is my manifestation because I believe the word is working. I need you to tell somebody around you again. Tell them the word is working. It's working. Moving on. Word is working. Word is working. Word is working. Word is working. The word is working. The word is working. It's working on my behalf. Why are you so happy? Because the word is working. <laughs> Why you got so much joy? Because the word is working. <laughs> But then it looked like it got worse. It looked like it, but the word is working. <laughs> then it seemed like it went down. It went down before it went up because the word is working. <laughs> when the word starts working and you put faith in the word working, then God gets excited because you shifted your posture to think you got to work it. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating for lazy Christianity. I'm not advocating for lazy people in the, in the kingdom of God that just say, oh, it's case, sera, sera. it'll happen. No, with promises come conditions. You have to activate the word of God. He activated the word of God by putting a demand on the presence of God and by releasing that he believed that if God spoke the word, it'll manifest. He, he did his part by coming to Jesus. He did his part by making his request known. He did his part by putting his faith on it. He wasn't just sitting back chilling, playing to, uh, video games and watching TV talking about the word is working. No, he said, God, I'm in active anticipation and expectation. I'm on the edge of my seat because any day now I'm about to get the manifestation of the things I pray for. I'm on the edge of my seat because any day now it's about to manifest and happen. I'm on the edge of my seat because I prayed, because I fasted, because I worshiped, because I prayed, because I gave your word back to you. Now, I've done everything everything I can do now do only what you can do and I trust you with the results I can tell I can tell your expectation by your posture. I can tell like what you're, what you're hoping for, believing for by the position you take once you make a request. That's why we say sit in the seat of expectation is anticipation. What Pastor Hannah always say, he say, lean in, lean in. Because when you lean in, you're, you're saying, hey, I gotta be ready to get up on my feet because any moment now, I gotta go. I gotta, My shoes are on, my, they're tied, I'm ready, because at any moment now, it can matter. Uh, 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 uh. I wake up every morning saying, is this the day? Is this the day? Is this the day? Is this the day it's gonna happen? Is this the day it's gonna shift? Is this the day it's gonna change? Why do you wake up with expectation? Because I have a word out there that hasn't manifested yet. And until it manifests, so I'm on anticipation. I'm expecting a word. I'm expect to receive a word. I respect, I expect that God in response to my faith that you will give me the next instruction. Uh, in response to my faith, to me putting it out there, you will tell me what to do next. I, re I expect to receive clarity. I expect to receive direction. I expect to receive understanding. I expect to receive what you want me to do next. 
Verse 13, after Jesus saw how he handled him, Jesus said, let me show you how I'm going to handle you. He says, go, let it be done just as you believed it would. You don't get in life just what you want. You get what you expect. You get what you have faith for. He said, mm, let it be done just as you believed that it would be done. He said, if you bad enough to come out here and tell me I don't have to come with you, I could just speak a word to your house and your servant going to be healed. Let it be done like you said it is. Can you, can you prophesy to your praise partner and tell them, let it be done according to your faith? Can you type... Can you type on the screen and say, let it be done according to your faith? Can you tag somebody and tell them, let it be done according to your faith? Come on. How did they act when you said it? Did they look like you just said another thing? Or did they, did something kick inside of them like they believe what you said? How, how did they respond to you saying, let it be done according to your faith? Because in the kingdom of God, you will have what you say. You don't get what you want, you get what you expect. And when you apply God's word, and I know it's a difficult concept because so many times we ask God to do it one way and he did it a different way. But that when the, if God ever does it a different way, it's because your way was too low than his way. <laughs> if, ever God does it, if ever God does it a different way, it's because he had a better way. Even if you thought that you had the best way, you had limited resource, limited understanding, he had a better way. He had a better way. And so he said, let it be done according to what you say. He says, your, your, your servant is at home, paralyzed, terribly sick, cannot move, but expect that it will be done according to your word. Number four, and the last one, he says, I expect for the word of God to be carried out. He says, in 20, in, 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 I, I want you to understand that in 2024, you need to expect the word of God to be carried out. You need to expect it to, it to manifest uh, as it says. You got to re-engage the word of the Lord. You have to re-engage your love relationship with his word. You have to re-engage the fact that, oh, I know people lied to me, God, but you never lie. Ah, I know people made promises to me that they did not keep, but you are a promise keeper. I re-engage my love with your word because that's the only way it works. He said, go and it will be done as you have said. Can I get you to just stand up on your feet real, real quick? Because I believe that God's going to do something in your home and in your house. Can you begin to lift up your hands and release your sound in the atmosphere and your mind in the area of your home and declare, God, in 2024, I need to release your word in my house. In 2024, I need to erase and eradicate every negative, ill-spoken word, every contrary word, every conditional word that I spoke that was uh, in against your word and in agreement with you. God, I shift in the atmosphere of my house. I speak healing and revelation and strength and salvation. I speak love and I speak peace. I speak joy and I speak prosperity, God. I send the word of the Lord to my house. Hey God, I feel it. Every paralyzed place in my house that has been stagnant and not been able to move, move it God. Everything that the enemy has pronounced to be dead without resurrection raise it up God. My marriage, the salvation of my children, the healing in my body, the restoration of my finances. I decree and declare, do something in my house God. I decree and declare in 2024 I need a divine makeover I need a renovation in the spirit God God I decree and declare that what your word has spoken over my life shall manifest in my house can I get you to open up your mouth and release his word concerning your house come on Come on, stay there. Call your children name. Come on, stay there. Call your career name out. Come on, stay there. Call your job out. Come on, stay there. Come on, stay there. Get in expectation. Come on, get in anticipation. 
Come on, Gideon is about is working for me. Come on, get it in your spirit. It's working for me. Come on, get it in your heart. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. By the time I get home, the word has already worked. By the time I get home, the word is already working. It's going to be carried out. Can you put a praise to that? Can you add a praise to your lips? Can you add a praise to your expectation? Can I see your expectation? Can I see your expectation by hearing your praise? Can your praise be a sound of your expectation? Can your praise be a sound of your expectation? Come on, this ain't this 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 is your turning point. This is your turn. This is in 2024. I'm about to shift the dynamics of my house and I declare my home pace will manifest. Come on, that's the sound. Come on, that's the sound. It's gonna be carried out. 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 The word is working. The word is working. It's working in my life. It's working in my life. Listen, listen what happened. Listen what happened. Verse 13, and I'm done. And I'll seal it. Do y'all believe that? Do y'all believe God's doing something in your house? Come on, do you believe something's manifesting, shifting in your house? Do you believe that your praise here is aligning your home? Watch it. I'm done. Verse 13. And, 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 verse 13, and his servant <laughs> was healed at the moment. And his servant was healed at the moment. At the servant was healed at the moment. At what moment? At the moment the word was spoken. He's over here and his servant's over there. The word is released right here and the moment... <laughs> The moment the word was spoken, even though he was in another dimension, another realm, another place, another city. The moment that the word spoke, it got released and worked in another place. I run into people all over the country that tell me they was in another city at another time and heard a word that was spoken in this house that start to manifest in their house. I need somebody to have a flashback in the pandemic when you were sitting at home watching on TV and the word hit your house and start to shift it. Can I get you to believe that God can release a word that manifests in your life and he's healed. And he's healed. I'm done. And he's healed at that very moment. We cannot afford to wait for the manifestation of God's word to have faith in his word. When his word is spoken, we have to start to shift our life like any day now. It's about to manifest and happen. I expect it to be carried out. I expect it to manifest because God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent if he makes you a promise is you can if he makes you a promise you can count on the fact that it's already done all the word people lift up your voice and release your worship right there worship come on worship come on worship come on worship come on worship it's already working come on it's already working come on in your spirit it's already working in your spirit he's a miracle worker He's a miracle worker. And it's already working in my, in my life. It's already working on my behalf. It's already working. Even when I can't see it, it's working. Even when I can't see it, it's working. I need that to settle in your spirit. Even when I can't see it, it's working. Even when I can't see how it's going to work, it's working. Even when I don't understand it, it's working. When I was in college, when I was in college, when I was in college, my, I got a phone call from my sister one evening. <laughs> this so happened, it was in the evening. I was fasting and praying before the Lord. I was in a consecration season. And uh, I got a phone call from my sister. And she told me that, that my mom was uh, immobile. And she couldn't, she couldn't move. Something, something happened. She was crying. She didn't understand what was going on. She was crying. I said, call the ambulance. Are you, where are you at? Everything, you know, 
give me a minute, let me know what they say. She said, okay. She hung up, called, of course, the ambulance was on their way. I, I got on my knees and I started praying. I was like, God, what is, what is going on with my mom? I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, in, I'm here. I'm here in Chicago. She's there in Michigan. And I'm in college and I don't know. And I, I remember flipping. I remember going to the Bible after praying in the spirit because I, I didn't want to pray naturally because I didn't, I didn't want to repeat something I didn't know. So I prayed what I couldn't know so I could know what I couldn't know. I'm going to leave you alone in a minute. I prayed what I couldn't know. And then I remember going over to the Bible and I flipped the scripture open. I know it's random. You do you. I did me. When it opened up, I went to Isaiah. The scripture flipped to Isaiah. In Isaiah, I read down, my eyes fell on the passage of scripture that said, I will heal you from the stroke of your wounds. That's literally what the Bible, and I will heal you from the stroke. I have never read that in the Bible ever before. It was right there. I said, oh my God. My mom had a stroke. My mom had a stroke. Oh, my God. I got ready to panic. I said, oh, my God. My God said, read it again. I read it again. He said, I will heal you from the stroke. He said, what's the first word I said? Heal. He put the healing before the problem. He said, she had a stroke, but I'm going to heal her. And you got to trust me for the healing. How many of you know that God will give you a word that you don't understand? But put his word. Put the promise before the problem. Put the promise before the problem. I start praying in the Holy Spirit. I start praying in the Holy Spirit. I start praying in the Holy Spirit. I got in the car, jumped in the car. I called. The, she was at the doctor by now. And the doctor's like, "Yes, she had a stroke." I was like, "I know, she had a stroke." The Lord told me already. I know what is going on. Well, don't. Well, it's nothing you could do. Just stay here and see you in the morning. It was like 12, 12 o'clock at night. I was like, "My mama just got in the hospital. Comes in the morning. Man, you crazy." I jumped in the car, drove all the way to Michigan in the middle of the night. Got to the hospital, went in there. My mother was laying on the bed, unconscious. She was laying there, not woke, not. Woke. Whoa. I put on a CD player. I got CD, put worship music, and I put worship on repeat, and I played it in the room, and I said, nothing or anybody in here can come in here because I'm creating an atmosphere for the presence of God. <laughs> anybody that comes in here with anything besides the presence of God got to get out of here. I let the music play, let the music play over and over and over again. My family members start calling me, asking me, what's going on with your mom? What's going on with your mom? I said, oh, God's going to heal her from the struggle. Oh, I don't need you to be talking that faith stuff. Tell me it's the real thing. I said, well, you need to talk to the doctor if you want to hear anything else besides what I'm saying, because all I got to say is faith. I ain't got time right now to be in fear. I ain't got time to be in diagnosis. I got, I got to hold on to my faith until I see it manifest. And if God do or don't, that ain't none of my business. My responsibility is to believe his word I stayed at the hospital I stayed at the hospital days on end my sisters we got in there we had the intercessors come we was praying we was all praying I didn't leave the hospital I went take a shower came back came to stay I set up in the in the in the uh, in the, uh, the the waiting room and it turned into like a worship and a prayer center anybody came in there I prayed for them anybody got in there I prayed I just stayed in there I stayed in the presence I went in I laid hands on my mama I anointed her with oil the presence of God she was still laying there unresponsive one day after about 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 four days or so one day the Lord told me stop stop praying and asking me and start believing like it's already done <laughs> stop playing stop asking me and start acting like it's already done so we went downstairs in that little uh, uh Methodist chapel in that little Methodist chapel I opened up the promises of God as relates to healing and I wrote out all the scriptures that I could find as relate to, to the healing of God on the front and on the back on the front and on the back and I took my sisters in there and I took all the intercessors and I said God said that we need to praise them like it's already done. So we went in a little Methodist chapel where they say shh, be quiet, and we went up in there. <laughs> and we went up in there, and when we went up in there, we pulled that paper out, and we got to walk in and decree it. God, your word said. God, your word said. God, your word said. And we give you praise, and your word said. And your word said. And we went up, and we went in, and we went up, and we went in. We flipped that little Methodist chapel till it was a praise center and we start praising God for what he said like it's already done can I get a praiser right there can I get a praise we we shifted our seat 
We shift in our seat into an expectation of God getting ready to do something. Man, I promise you, I promise you. We went back upstairs, and when we went back upstairs, the nurse came and found us and met us halfway. Said, your mother is woke. She is responsive. Her hand went up. She started moving her body. I said, oh, that's just what God said. Can I tell you that from that moment to the next 72 hours, progressively every day she got better. By a week she was out. A month later, a month later, she was at home out of rehabilitation, driving, working. Next year we going on a cruise and she retiring. Can I get somebody to give God a praise? Because he's a miracle. She feels a sound of miracles. Signs and we believe. We believe in your power. We believe. We want you to do it. Yes, sir. We believe. Hey, I need somebody to lift your faith right there. you should do it. I wore my heel heel bracelet today because I wanted to put out a declaration that God we still believe in for total healing for Pastor John Hill. We decree and declare that you're still able to do it. We got to mature. Sometimes God does it like that and sometimes when we say heal he does it another way. We say, God, no more suffering. Sometimes he do it like that, and sometimes he does it another way. But how many of you know that I got to trust God's plan even when I don't understand? Can you lift your voice and say, he's a... I expect your word to work. We believe. We believe. Let me hear the church say, miracles, hey. We burn. Come on, church. Use your faith. Say it. Sign. For as many times as I could tell you a testimony of how God did it, I could tell you a testimony of how God did it differently. I could tell you as many times as how he did it the way I thought and exceeded my expectation. And I could tell you many times where I had to wrestle with my disappointment because he didn't do it the way I thought. Something Pastor Hannah stuck out to me that he said this week after receiving some bad news, he said, but he's still God. He texted to me in all bold. He said, it didn't happen the way we thought, but he's still God. 
said, our, our job wasn't to be God. Our job is never to be God. Our job is to have faith in God. And then we trust that God is God. And he's still God. Even when we can't see it, he's working. So the first Sunday in 2024, get over yourself. Get over your disappointment. Nah, last time I got my faith up and it didn't happen. And that, I, it took me three months to get over that. So I'm just going to keep my faith low. Okay, maybe it won't happen. Maybe I won't get out of debt. Maybe I'm just supposed to have this sick sickness my whole life. Maybe I'm supposed to just be in debt. Maybe I'm just supposed to live in this apartment. Maybe I'm supposed to live in lack. The devil is alive. I'm going to get over my disappointments for all the time and it didn't happen. And I'm going to put my faith on God that it will happen. And that very moment, it happened. 20 seconds, open up your mouth now. Stop and release your sound of worship and praise that you believe God. I'm sitting in a seat. I'm sitting in a seat of expectation. I'm sitting in a seat of expectation. While everybody's standing on your feet, there's someone under the sound of my voice today. You didn't come to church for church. You came to church for change. You said, God, I've been in disappointment after disappointment. I've been hurt. I don't know what's going to happen, but I came here today believing that maybe you got something for my life. And today on this first Sunday of 2024, I promise if you make this commitment to walk towards God, that he'll take the rest of your year and make it make sense for you. There's somebody here, he ain't even wait till I said come down. He said, oh, I'm already on my way. Can I get somebody else that say, I'm already on my way? That sound like me. I'm coming by faith. I need to come and give my life to God. I need to walk. I came to church for what I came to church for. And today is my Sunday of expectation. I want you to pray this prayer with me on the screen. We're going to pray it and pray it loudly. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Come on. I invite Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of this confession, I am saved. <laughs> yes, sir. There are ministers and intercessors that walked up behind you because at New Life, nobody walks alone. At New Life, when you give your life to Jesus, we send somebody to walk with you, get your information, pray with you, pray for you if you have a prayer concern so that you do not walk alone in this new life. <laughs> you don't need to walk alone. New life, can you give God praise as they follow them back to the prayer room, congratulating them for their new season? Follow them, come on. Congratulate them for their new season. If you're watching online and salvation is your portion, there's no distance in the spirit. You can pray the prayer on the screen or scan the code on the bottom. Somebody will walk with you too. They will call you by tomorrow and speak life to you to walk with you. Just pray, call, put the number that's on the screen or scan the code that's on the bottom and it will happen and manifest in your life. We celebrate you. Come on, keep giving God praise right there. Give him praise. God of miracles, signs and wonders we believe in your power. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Yes, sir. Even when I can't see you, even when I can't see you, it's working. Working, working. Working, working, working. Don't leave yet. We're about to lead together. Working, working, working. Working, working, working. Working, working, working. You need to seal this message with a spirit of premise. How many of you can be honest with me that sometimes the enemy try to try to put doubt in your head? All the last two weeks I have wrestled with so much doubt in my head. I refuse to let it come out my mouth. but I had to fight it in my head. The enemy keeps trying to plant doubt in my head because he know if, I can, if he can get me to say it, I give it power. 
So I had to cast down, cast down every imagination that is on itself against the knowledge of God. Sometimes the work is just casting down the imagination. Fight the doubt. Don't let it come out your mouth. Let your expectation rise. So we seal this word for the people that waited with a spirit of promise that the enemy cannot steal not one word that was spoken today. That disappointment and discouragement would not be more powerful than our faith. I thank you that faith is rising now and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Can you seal it with a praise today? <laughs> Come on, can you seal it with a praise? How many tithe and offering givers do I have in the room? I'm a tither, I'm a tither. All the tithers, all the tithers. Come on, lift up your hands. I'm a tither. Somebody say, I'm a tither. This first Sunday, this first Sunday, this first Sunday, first Sunday of the year. I want you to set the tone with your tithe. Set the tone with your tithe. Maybe you never were a tither. This is your first time tithing. Tithing is 10% that you give to God off the top. Off the top preferentially, because it's easier to give off the top than it is off the bottom. It's easier to give your first than it is to give your last. Off the top, when you bless God with the 10% off your top, he bless the 90%. Somebody say, I'm a tither. That's 10%. And then listen to me, this morning, very early, softly, this morning, very early, I woke up in the morning with this, I, this in, my, in my spirit. And I want to challenge everyone that can to give this seed. Read this scripture, Psalm 65 and 11. This scripture came to me very early in the morning. And I want you to put your seed and your faith on it. It says, you crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow <laughs> with abundance. I don't know about you, but my, my, while my phone was out, I would take a picture of that right there. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance so I woke up at 344 with in my spirit you crown this year with your bounty and your carts will overflow with abundance you will not lack and you will not run out you your year is crowned with abundance and your carts overflow <laughs> are y'all hearing what I'm saying I want you to sow a seed put a seed on this word put it back up put a seed on this word of $65.11 I want you to sow the scripture sow the word sow the scripture I'm sowing the scripture by faith he says he gives seed to the sower gives you seed to the sower for generosity it's not superstitious. It's putting the word to work. It's saying, God, I believe this scripture for my life, Psalm 65 and 11, and I'm going to put a seed on this scripture. I'm going to put your word to work. I'm going to put your word to work. Psalm 65 and 11 online. Psalm 65 and 11, over and above your tithes, crown my year. <laughs> crown my year. Psalm 65 and 11, I will not lack. I will live in abundance. You don't have that. Don't feel guilty. Do the very best you can. And as soon as you get it, sow it. Whenever you read, whenever you hear this, if you hear this on Tuesday, sow it. If you hear this word on Thursday, sow it. If your money don't come in the Friday, sow it. Sow it by faith. I'm sowing this by faith today. All three services. I'm sowing it. I'm sowing it by faith. Psalm 65 and 11. Everybody stand up on your feet. Let's decree and declare the scripture. Let's decree and declare for our lives what the word of the Lord says concerning us here at New Life. He says, I'm a, we say, I'm a tither and a giver. I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my, I'm living in Ephesians 3.20. How long? For the rest of my life. Y'all believe it? Did you learn something today? Good. Walk it out by faith. See you Tuesday for 4 a.m. prayer. Thursday for Bible study. Pray for Pastor Hannah or stay. He's going to preach the next two services back to back. We love you. This is your year of expectation. Stay in the seat of expectation. He's a miracle worker. Peace. God bless. Peace.